Hello there, middle school math teacher. Halloween is quickly approaching. If you're anything like me, you love Halloween. I love Halloween. I love dressing up. I love decorating my classroom and my house. But with Halloween comes lots of energy. Kids are bouncing off the walls and the dreaded day after Halloween. Am I right? Where kids are like zombies because they've been out all night. The sugar has crashed. And now we are left to figure out what the heck do we do? Don't worry. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you three of my favorite middle school math Halloween activities. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach 6th, 7th, 8th grade, and Algebra 1 math. Okay, so let's dive in. These three activities cover a variety of math topics, and they are a variety of different activities. So let's jump right in. One of my favorite types of activities to use, I use it all the time, I would say every day, if not every other day, um, are task cards. And you are getting a set of task cards for changing decimals to percents and percents to decimals. This set of task cards includes 15 task cards, an answer key, and a, a paper for your students to show their work. So you can see here, this first task card says, write the decimal as a percent. The decimal is 58 hundredths, write it as a percent. So there are, again, 15 of them. I love task cards and I use them all the time because they are so versatile. You can use them as a homework alternative. Your pro tip, your administration loves seeing task cards, especially as a homework alternative because even though it is like paper, it's not like your typical worksheet. And I think the other reason why I love task cards so much is because for any student, whether they are advanced whether or whether they have an IEP, having one problem on a card that they're focused on makes it so much easier to answer the question and accomplish the goal versus having a worksheet of like 25 problems. And it can feel very overwhelming, especially for our students who you know, get overwhelmed by seeing so many problems on a page. That's really the main reason why I love task cards so much. And it feels, students feel the sense of accomplishment when they can answer one card and put it aside. And then they can answer the next card and put it aside. And they have this like done pile where it's like, okay, great, look, I finished, you know, four, I only have two left. And I give you 15 task cards. That doesn't mean you need to assign all 15. You can simply tell your students, we're and do task cards one through five, or you know what? Here are 15 and I want you to pick seven that you want to do any seven that you want. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I love using task cards as a homework alternative, as classwork, especially in stations, like small group. It can be used in so many other ways. Whole class. I use it all the time when we're playing whole class games because the problems are already written there for me. So it's just, it's so easy. And another pro tip with task cards, if you can laminate them so you can reuse them every year. Okay, the second activity that I wanna show you that is that goes along with our Halloween theme is a, is this pixel art, digital pixel art activity. This is for distributive property. If you've never done pixel art before, you are in for a real treat. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. Um, this is the answer, or this is the question page. It's uh, completed on a Google sheet. So if you don't have Google, you can simply go to file, um, let's see, download, and you can download it as a Microsoft Excel and you can use it that way as well. It works exactly the same. So you can see it's blank here and you're probably thinking, what is the big deal? So the whole point is that students will answer each question and then a mystery pixel art picture will appear. One of the best things about this activity is that it is self-correcting. So you do not need to spend time correcting every kid's assignment. How awesome is that? So you can see here, 
the first question is two times x plus three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the correct answer so you can see what happens. The correct answer should be two x plus six. I'm gonna hit enter and you can see, whoa, a whole bunch of yellow just appeared. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the next one. Negative three times two n minus four. So the correct answer is, should be negative six n plus 12. Okay, more of this showed up. So let's pretend that I'm answering the next question and I'm gonna get it wrong on purpose so you can see what happens. So let's just say I did negative G plus 16. Hmm? Did you see that? Nothing happened, right? Okay, so that tells me, okay, I went wrong somewhere. Oh, I see, it should be negative G minus 16. So you can see more of the picture has come up. The answer key is provided for you. When students are finished, this will be the full picture that they, you know, that will appear. One thing that you can do is you can just simply hide the sheet so that students don't see the answer key right there. You want them to be able to just have, you know, the, the actual questions. All right, that is activity number two. The third and final activity, one of my ultimate favorites and the perfect reason to use all of that Halloween candy that you just collected, or you could even have students bring in some Halloween candy so you don't have to go out and buy your own, but it is called M&M's Ratios. So all you have to do here is use one of those fun size packs of M&M. Fun size is plenty. If you want to use, you know, the regular size M&Ms, more power to you. I have done that before during a time when it wasn't Halloween, but I think buying the fun size packs is plenty. Students, each student will get one of these sheets. They will get their own fun size bag, and they're simply finding the ratio of all the colors of M&Ms in their bag. This is a great introductory activity to ratios, and it's delicious and fun. Obviously, there is no answer key with this one because every student's answer is going to be different because every student's M&M bag is gonna be different. And what I love to do in terms of extending this activity is you know, each individual student will fill out their own sheet, will fill out based on their own individual M&Ms pack, but what you could also do is afterwards, once everyone is finished, pair up students and then do this again, but as a total partnership, you know, because then it will change the ratios. So it's cool for them to see, it's cool for students to see, okay, what are my, what are the, you know, what am I getting for my individual pack? And then how does it change when I am with a partner? So what do you think of these Halloween activities? If you would like to grab these activities absolutely free, use the link in the description box below or however way you are watching this video, there will be a link that you can just download these for free and use them right now in class to help you get through this wild Halloween period of the school year. I hope that you've enjoyed. Let me know in the comments which activity you are most excited to use first. And I cannot wait to hear what activities your students are loving. My personal favorite is the M&M's ratios, but I, want, I can't wait to hear what you are loving. Until next time, bye for now.